Welcome everyone, this is our Wednesday Wisdom where we go over tips, tricks, and information on band instrument repair. Today we're going to be showing you how to make a busher pivot screw. Uh, before we get to that, we're going to do a couple of winners for you. Uh, our hashtag from this week or for this week is going to be uh, busher pivot. Make sure you put that in the comments below. If you put it in the live chat, make sure you also put it in the comments below so that we can see it a little more easily when we check the winners the following week. And make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. If you have a friend who is interested in machining or uh, tinkering with saxophones or other woodwinds, make sure you share this with them and say, hey, subscribe to this. Uh, we are going to start doing some giveaways for our specific subscribers because I can see if you've subscribed. Uh, so try to get a few more subscribers here so we can start sharing some of this content in other places. So like for us to share our little videos that come up uh, on the on a weekly basis, we have to have a certain amount of subscribers, so we're trying to get that up. So make sure you put Busher, put Busher Pivot in the uh, comments below. We'll be entered into the prize, and make sure you subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe. It's in there, folks. And, and click the bell. Click, click the, the bell. bell. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so the winner for this week, uh, this was going to be for 10% off of our uh, any course that's happening the rest of the year of 2022. The winner is Lauren Fisher. Lauren, uh, sorry, wait, wait, that's the athlete. Uh, Lauren Risher with an R. Uh, Lauren, congratulations. Send me an email to rich at musicmedic.com and I will get you your discount code uh, for any course that's coming up. And so Ryan, let's get into our making of a busher pivot screw. We said it was going to be in 10 steps. Is it 10? Uh, you steps? said 10 and I had to push it into 10. It's it, plus or minus. I might skip a step here or there. But okay. Some steps might be combined. Um, but yeah, more or less 10 steps and they are very easy. You Very know what you're doing. Easy steps. Easy steps. Now you're going to draw some of this out, right? I am. I'm going to draw the whole thing out in all the steps uh, on this whiteboard, and then I'm going to run out to the pro shop, go to the lathe, and I'm going to do everything, hopefully in this order. Uh, Rich is going to be back over here checking my work and making sure that, yes. you know, helps to, to guide you along with this. Yes. Um, so making a busher pivot screw. The first thing I'm going to do uh, uh, is I'm going to just draw real quick a, a picture of what a busher pivot screw looks like. For those of you that are not familiar with busher pivot screws, if you're not familiar with pivot screws, we have a pivot screw series we did. It was a yes. a 37 part series, I think, Rich. Something, something more, like more that. More or less 37, yes. 5 or, or whatever it was. Um, but this is a picture of a busher pivot screw. A couple things we have our head here. Obviously, there's going to be our slot for our screwdriver tip to go into. Um, there is the cylindrical tip of it and this is what goes in the end of the key okay unlike other ones that have a true tapered system mm -hmm. where it actually has a pointed taper at the end this is just a cylindrical section like this and it's a little rounded at the tip there um, but this is what it looks like and this is what we're going to be making today so okay let me go over the 10 steps keep that picture in your mind folks so Imagine this is the end of a <laughs> end of the lathe. This is the chuck. This is what I'm holding it with, the collet holder, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I need to pick a piece of drill rod that has the same diameter as the head of the pivot screw. So if I were to superimpose that pivot screw, this is what it would look like. While you're doing that, I'm going to show them a picture. There's the, the headstock with the collet holder. There it is, yes. Okay. We're going to be going on. So you can see what this needs to do is this needs to be the same width as the head, not as the threads, which you would typically do if you were making, let's say, a hinge rod, okay? So I have to make sure that the diameter of this drill rod is the same diameter as the head. And it's, for you math nerds out there, or, you know, just regular nerds, you don't have to be math nerd. It's 0.125 inches, mm -hmm. okay, is the diameter of what I'm using there. So when I cut this off, this has kind of a sharp tip to it. So uh, step two is just rounding this out a little bit, making a, a slight bevel. So here is, again, my fancy lathe drawing. So all I'm doing is making just a slight bevel to it, just cleaning this up. What this allows is the tool that I'm going to be using to make all of my cuts. If I were to go against a square edge like this, a lot of times that tool would bend and maybe even break. So I mm -hmm. want to have a little bit of a, a angle or a bevel so that when I bring that tool across, I make nice smooth cuts. Okay. So that's step two. Step three is I need to now turn this area down to the maximum OD of the diameter of my threads. Okay. So this is what it would then look like 
something like this. So you can see what I've done is I've turned this down. Now you can see this is starting to become where the head is. They're going to have my, my threads here. And then the very end is where I'm going to turn it, turn it down to have that cylindrical pin section at the very end. Um, so now that I've turned this down to the correct size, again, it's the size of the threads that I, I am thinking about. Uh, we can go ahead. I'm going to make a little bit more of a bevel at the end. That's one of the steps. So we're going to make a little bit more of a tapered end to this. And what this does. Hey, yo. Hi, yo. Uh, rope heads. <laughs> Gorilla marketing. <laughs> uh, what this does is it allows, when I use my die to actually thread, it, it allows it to kind of catch. It makes a little ramp. Uh, if it's too blunt of an end, that die will have a tough time catching. Uh, and actually cutting my threads. Next step is actually after I've cut my threads. So how does this look? It's going to look like this. All threads, oh, it's right? All threads. Threads, threads, threads. Threads for days. Okay. <laughs> so, or, or hours or minutes. I don't know. So we have this big long thing. And you can see I have this non-threaded section at the end of the, of the pivot screw. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is actually turn this down. So it's going to look something like this at the scale, not the scale. <laughs> okay, <laughs> keep saying that. So you can see what I've done is I've taken it, I've basically cut down these threads and I've changed this to now it to be a cylindrical section. Uh, the nice thing about making a busher pivot screw is you can now not only adjust the, the diameter of this right here, um, you know, to take up any slot in the end of the key. If this is in here and it's a little too loose, you can actually make this bigger and it's going to be tighter around the end of the key. Um, the other thing is you can actually adjust the length, and I've done that as well. Okay, especially specifically working on the larger busher instruments, the busher berries. Uh, we did a busher bass one time where I remade every single pivot screw. Mm. I think it was 16 of them uh, that I had to make. And when I made them, not only did I make them a little bit longer, I made them thicker as well. And that helped me in the key fitting stage. Okay. Uh, when I'm just replacing a busher pivot screw for one that just for whatever reason, um, I, a lot of times will, will do this. Okay. So is that called oversizing? Ryan? It is. Yeah. Slightly oversizing. oversizing. You can do it with rods as well. Okay. Uh, obviously we're doing it with this. We're not doing it with the threads. Okay. The threads for those of you, again, you math nerds out there, 3-48, okay? 348 is the threads of a Busher pivot screw. Very good. All right? Uh, not to throw in a little ad, but 348 is included in our ultimate tap and die set, Rich. Uh -huh. I don't know if you knew this. I know you do, but I don't know if you did. Very nice. So there you Very go. Very nice. Now what I have to do is create a little bit of a shoulder right here, okay? A little bit of separation from where the threads go all the way up to the bottom of that screw head. So I got to create a little space in there. Um, typically, I will use my parting blade, and you'll see that when we get out there, um, just to kind of come in and just buzz those away. Um, for this, it's a little bit smaller on a busher pivot screw, so I'm going to be using a uh, jeweler saw for that. And so that's going to make it look like this. This is going to come out, look like that. There again is my shoulder. So it's that little notch right there that I'm making. You can see it's not there, but there it is. No. Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> yes. No. Okay. So here okay. it is that I've just made it with the jeweler saw. I've made my shoulder. Everything's pretty much complete. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm not going to draw this, although this is one of the steps. This might be the hidden 11th step mm. is after cutting this and then making my shoulder, I'm going to rethread my die on. And that's going to reform any threads at the beginning or end here that may have gotten like messed up a little bit from me cutting. So we just chase those. That's uh, a step. Well, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven A is is that step. Chase the threads. Okay. okay. So now we're back on to over here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to part this off. Okay. So it's going to look something. There's my shoulder. There are my threads. And I'm getting pretty good at drawing these busher pivot screws. <laughs> so yeah, don't I've come in job. and I've actually separated with my parting blade, cut it all the way off, and boom, there is my busher pivot screw. Now, it doesn't have a slot in it yet. So, so now what I have to do is I'm going to switch the type of collet that I hold it with. I'm gonna flip it. I'm gonna put this cylindrical section in. That way, just the head is exposed. 
Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my triangular needle file. There's my triangular needle file right there. It's a triangle. And I'm going to just file a little notch. Okay. Rather than just taking my jeweler saw blade to make that slot and having it slip around, I make a little kind of a channel for it to follow. So I'm going to use my needle file, my triangular needle file, make my little notch, and then I can finally get in there with my jeweler saw blade and make an appropriate uh, screwdriver slot in the end. So there you are. It's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight, Whoa. nine, ten. Whoa. Another guerrilla marketing. Group hats. Buy them, or we'll throw them right at you. So there you go. So there's ten. That's ten, right? Ten, I think. Six, I seven, think eight. that. Yes, I think that is ten steps. And then, uh, oh wait, where are you numbering them? I didn't see that. Oh, there's ten. Seven. Sorry, number ten. Number ten. It's okay. I, so I'll probably go through and point. Yep. As you're going, so you're gonna now, Ryan. You're gonna head out to the. I am. The I'm, lathe gonna, I'm gonna run out there holding some scissors. Okay, very good. And of course, this is all gonna be part of Ryan's advanced saxophone course on September 19th through the 22nd. We're gonna go over different machining techniques uh, related to advanced key working. So if you are in the repair industry and you want to get uh, some, get your head above water or get some added tips and tricks for machining and making some pivot screws this is going to be included in that course and now we have the lathe cam and Ryan is putting into his what do you have there an ER11 collet this, yep an ER11 collet and you can see what that looks like uh, and now this is my drill rod again that 0.125 3.17 millimeters yeah something like that <laughs> So there we are. I'm going to stick that out about that far, use my collet wrench to tighten everything up. And if I hold up a, an original busher pivot screw to this, you can see how much I'm working with here. Okay, so I have plenty of room to make all these threads all in here, uh, plus a little bit of extra. Now, one thing I will mention, anytime you're dealing with a lathe, uh, a good general rule of thumb is the diameter of the part you're working with. You don't want more than three times that amount sticking out. Now, I probably have quite a bit more. What tends to happen is if you have too much sticking out, as you cut it, what happens is it actually will flex that part. Okay. Uh, now, I'm going to be taking very, very small cuts, and I'm going to be using, let me reel it into focus here, the parting blade. Okay. Now. You traditional machinists out there, everybody calm down. This is not really designed for these types of cuts going back and forth like this, okay? This is really only designed to go straight in and part off whatever you've been working on, okay? But because I'm taking such very, very, very small cuts, I can use this parting blade. Um, if, if I'm taking too big of a cuts, a lot of times this may bend. Uh, it's not going to give me smooth cuts. Um, the other reason why I stick with just using a parting blade is it saves me time having to switch back and forth between multiple multiple cutting bits. All right, so I'm just going to stick with that parting blade. So you real machinists that see me going back and forth with the parting blade, everybody calm down. Everybody calm down. It's okay. So there we are. <laughs> I have my drill rod in again, 0.125. Uh, you can see how it has a nice square edge. I'm going to need to give that a little bit of a bevel so my parting blade can catch. And for that, I'll just use a regular traditional machinist file. Uh, make sure you have a handle on it when you are using it. couple quick little swipes and you can see now I have a slight bevel to the end. So now I'm going to get in here and start cutting and again I'm turning this down to the OD of the threads. Okay, we've already picked the size of this which is originally going to be the size of the screw head itself. Now I'm turning down for the threads.
So there, let me go ahead and measure. I think I'm within the range. Yep, we're good to go. So now I can start to make my, uh, to actually do my threading. But again, before I do that, I'm going to have to make that little bit of a bevel so that die can catch. There's go back that. to my file. Just a couple quick swipes. And now I can wheel my cutting die into place. So there we are. And for those of you, again, there it is, 348. This is my cutting die. So before I do that, I'm going to add a little bit of cutting fluid. Now what I'm going to do is when I first start to thread on, I am going to push this way slightly. When this die starts to catch, I don't long, no longer want to push in this way. It may distort or you know do some damage to your threads or your die. So as soon as it starts to catch, I'm just now going back and forth. So I'm pressing slightly. I feel it catch. And now all I'm going to do is do maybe a little bit of a rotation and then back it up. And what that does is that releases that chip that you're cutting from inside the die. It makes the cut a little bit smoother. I don't want to go all the way in in one fail swoop. Okay? So I want to work myself in a little bit, back it out, break that chip off. Work myself in, back it out, break that chip off. Back and forth, back and forth. Now when I get closer to that unthreaded section, kind of where that shoulder is going to go. I have to be very, very careful. I don't want this die to go over top of that and mess up that area. A lot of times I'll use a little brush and brush it away so I can actually see. I'll get as close to that as possible. When I back everything away, you can see I have my, my threaded section. And you can see all of this threaded section in here and then right there. I didn't want to get too close to this area, so I just left a little bit where it's unthreaded. I'm not worried about that because, again, that's where my shoulder is going to go. Okay. So now, if I hold up, again, that Busher pivot screw next to this, you can see I have plenty of room. So I'm going to start to cut away these threads right in here. Again, I'm using still my parting blade for that. And I'm taking very small cuts. And this was the part I was talking about when you make this, you can actually make this a little bit wider depending on the condition of your keywork. So let's see how that looks compared to an original one. Looking pretty good. All right. So now that I've got this turned down, I will take a, a sanding stick and clean this area up, uh, get rid of any remaining threading marks if there are there. So there we are. Now I'm going to cut my shoulder. And again, for that, I'm going to use my jeweler saw. So there it is. And I do this under power. So there we are, there's my slight shoulder in there, and now is where I go in and chase the threads again, just to make sure they're fully formed. So 
there we are, chasing those threads. Everything should be good to go. And now I can use my parting blade again and actually part off, cut off the, the pivot screw, and then I can flip it around and make the marks for my slot. your pivot screw. So now I'm going to change out the collet so I can flip it around and have that head exposed so I can make the marks for my slot. So Ryan, while you're changing out that collet, about how fast are you turning those parts? Um, it's probably about 1,000 to 1,200 RPM. Uh, so it's not incredibly fast, but then again, it's not very, very slow. Uh, I think the max speed on this lathe is 2,500, and I have it cranked up uh, about half, half of that, I would say. So you can see I put my slightly smaller collet. That way it can hold onto the threads uh, and not damage them. So another reason why I like to use these collet holders, again, ER11. Put it in just like so. Tighten everything down, and then you can see that little nub left over from when I parted it off. I'm just going to use a file and just kind of take that down. So now I'm going to grab my triangular file. It's my triangular file. There's the triangle. And I'm just going to make a little groove or a little notch for my jeweler saw blade to follow. Otherwise it wants to kind of slip around. Oh, hello bot. There we we are. just got a ton of bot comments. Oh my gosh. Oh. So I've made my notch and I'm again I'm going to take my jeweler saw blade. Put it right in that little groove making sure I keep this nice and level. So there's my notch. I'll usually take a sanding stick and deburr one end of the notch. Nice. The other end of the notch. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn the whole thing on and just clean it up a little bit with a sanding stick and then finish it up with a little bit of my polishing paper which is right here so There we are, a Busher pivot screw in around 10 easy steps, <laughs> plus or minus one or two. There's like a 7A included in there. So there you are, done. And of course, Ryan, this is all going to be included in our course in September. Now we do have some folks watching from around the world. Is Do you think there's going to be some options for virtual courses for those around the world say we do this at like six in the morning Ooh. so that people overseas Ooh. absolutely not I will not be getting up early for that uh, <laughs> eventually we may go back into doing some some virtual courses but yeah this one's gonna be all in person very good so yeah so they get here and and, and uh, yeah really learn hands-on very cool now uh, the other question that I had for you uh, is is can you use this method on the lathe for making other types of pivot screws, say like a Mark VI pivot screw that has a mm -hmm. taper? Um, how is that process compared to this one with the cylindrical pieces? You can to a certain extent. If you're having to replace like one or two pivot screws, you can do this method. The, the trick is getting that taper 
to be exact every single time. Because a lot of times you're getting in there and you're filing it by hand. The nice thing is you can do, the reason why you can do bushel pivot screws very easily is because it just has that cylindrical section. Uh, and it's very easy to make a cylindrical section uh, on the lathe. But making that taper tip, it's a little bit tougher. Um, so can it be done? Yes. Should it be done for every single pivot screw? No, I would probably go ahead and get a replacement one. Okay. Uh, but obviously you can't really get replacement bushel pivot screws, so that's why you have to make them. <laughs> right here. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for that demonstration and making those parts for us. Thank you all for watching and tuning in wherever you are in the world. Uh, greetings to you, and we hope to see you again next time. We'll be back next week. Uh, Ryan and Leroy will be here, and we'll be using our body section mandrels to take tents. Uh, take tents? Take, take tents. dents. We're going uh, camping. Uh, <laughs> Bringing the body section. Take dents out of a saxophone body. So uh, thank you guys so much. Put your comments and your hashtag below uh, to be entered into the drawing to win a discount on the next prize, which is going to be a discount off of our courses that are coming up. Uh, that's going to do it for today. Until next time, happy repairing. I'll keep waving. It's okay. I'll keep waving. Cool. How long?